In this video of our Meshtastic for Makers course, we are going to be receiving messages from the Meshtastic network onto our Pico and doing things with it like controlling hardware and displaying sensor information. We're going to be using the exact same setup from the last video, which we used to send information. You can find that video and all the others in the playlist below or follow along on our written course also linked down there. All right, let's go ahead and start with a really simple example. We are going to control the angle of a servo with messages from the network. Really simple, we're going to plug the power of our servo into ground and VBUS, which is going to give us 5 volts, and then we're going to connect the signal to pin 0, which is just what we're going to be using for this demo. We're just going to go through another code along example in Thonny, and there isn't actually much needed to get this going like last time, but to make it really robust and reliable, that's where a lot of the work and a lot of the code comes from. All right, first things first, let's ensure we have our MicroPython servo library installed onto our Pico like so. We're going to go ahead and import our libraries exactly like we did last video, as well as the servo library this time. And then we're going to go ahead and set up the UART peripheral exactly like we did last time as well. Now we're going to create a servo. We're just going to call it test servo. And that is going to be in pin zero. Oh, equals zero. Then we're going to enter our while true loop. And we're going to start by checking if UART.any in brackets, something, something, something. Now, when a Pico receives a UART message, it's going to be held in something called the buffer until we do something with it. And this UART.any, it returns true if there is a message waiting in the buffer for us. So if it is true, we're going to say message equals UART.read, just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and print out that message. Easy peasy. All right, let's give that a test, drag that up. I'm just going to send a test message. I'm just going to send the word test like so. And you can see there's a bit of a jumbled mess, but our message is in there. So what's going on with this weird format here? Well, the B and the quotation marks are something called a byte string. It's just what happens when you use UART. But this weird thing here in the middle with the slashes and the bytes is unfortunately a bug with MicroPython and Meshtastic. The message is meant to be coming through as the four letter short name of the sending device, a colon, and then the message behind it. But in MicroPython, we get this big jumble instead of the name. If you're using C++ or another device, that four letter code might come through fine. But for us, we're just going to ignore it completely. And to do so, we're going to paste in this big function here. You don't need to know how it works. It's quite involved. All you need to know is that we can send our message to this function and it's going to take out the actual text that we send. It's going to remove everything except for the actual message. And I'm going to print fixed message this time. And if we run this and send a test message, I'm just going to say test. We can see we're just getting our message through nice and beautifully like so. And from this point, it should be as simple as saying test servo underscore write dot and then the fixed message, which we're going to send a number through. But very importantly, anything coming through UART is going to come through as a string and we can't put a string as a servo angle. So we need to turn it into an integer before we start using it. All right, we should be able to run that. And I'm just going to send a number from my phone, which is connected to our other Meshtastic device. I'm going to send 180. And the servo gets set to 180. If I send zero, it's going to be set to zero. Oh, how awesome is that? And I should be able to pretty much set it as frequently as I can send messages. There's one more thing we should put in this, and that is error handling. This is probably going to be the most difficult part of setting up something like this in the real world, because let's say I set this up on a mountain a kilometer away, and I'm going to send instead of a number, I'm going to send actually a letter and a number like so. And I send that and it crashes. And now we need to make a trip out to our Pico to fix this or restart it. A really handy tool to help prevent things like this is the try except function. So we're going to try to do something and we're going to nest this writing the servo angle in like so. And then we're going to accept. This is if we try to do something and it fails, we're going to do something else. And we don't actually want it to do anything. So we're just going to say pass, which is do nothing. So now we get our message. We try and write it to the servo. If it works, it works fine. We move on. If it fails, we just don't do anything and we move on as well. And I run this code. And if I go T5 instead of maybe accidentally writing 45, nothing happens. And if I write 45, it gets set to 45. Beautiful. 
And of course, we used a servo with this example, but this could very as easily be a linear actuator or a motor being turned on, a solenoid lock, a relay flipping some other device, a light or LED, whatever your project needs, you can now control it like so. Now that's great and all for a simple setup with, you know, maybe device A to send data and device B to receive that data. But what if we add some more into this mix? Well, this is where things might start to get a little bit tricky. I have another one of these here. It's exactly the same, just with a smaller screen and a bit of a DIY antenna solution on a pencil there. And if I send them both a message with a number, they're both gonna receive that and set the servos accordingly because they're both running the exact same code. We probably don't want that, so we're gonna need to devise a system to individually control them. We are gonna go through an example of a really simple system for this. We're gonna send a sort of topic or identifier before the number. So if we wanted to set the angle of our first device, we might send servo A and then a colon and then the actual number. And if we want to send data to the other one, we're going to go servo B, colon, and then the number. So with that system in mind, let's go ahead and modify our code to match that. So we're going to read the message exactly the same, fix it up exactly the same. But here we're going to say something really cool. We're going to say if fixed underscore message dot starts, starts, yeah, starts with in brackets. And we're going to say servo A, colon, like that. This is going to be the bread and butter of most of this, this dot starts with function. We essentially put something in there and if it starts with it, it's going to do whatever we put inside of it. Really simple and a really helpful tool. So inside of this if statement, we're gonna put our try function. I'm just gonna go ahead and move it around. There's something very important we need to do because it's gonna have that first bit and then the actual number we need. We're gonna to need to strip off that first bit. And we can do so with that dot split function here, which is gonna take our fixed message, cut it after the colon, and then we're gonna grab the second bit of it, which is gonna be the actual number we want. And then just so we can see what's going on, I'm just gonna pop in a few print statements here and there, just to help with maybe a little bit of debugging. Ooh, where are we? As usual, I have forgotten a semicolon on an if statement, and we should be able to run this. And then I'm gonna send servo capital A followed by an angle, and our servo is going to be set like so, but if I send any other message, any other number, any other even combination of something followed by a colon and then a number, it's going to be ignored like so. And I've gone ahead and uploaded the same code to this one, except instead of servo A, it's looking for the name servo B. If I send servo B, that one gets sent, and if I send servo A, only that one moves like so. And you can see from the screens that they are both actually receiving those messages. Now this is just the system we're using here. I'm not saying you need to use it. It's just probably the simplest way. You should do whatever your project needs. This whole planning and organizing the messaging system across your network might actually be the fun aspect of your project and you know worth overdoing just, just for the fun of it. All right, let's do one more example, something really practical. We are gonna build a little dashboard with this giant SSD 1306 OLED screen. And this is of course going to work with the smaller one you might encounter more often. On the course page you're going to find the sample code for this. It's a bit too long to code along with and write live so we're just going to paste it in like so. We're also going to install the required SSD1306 library like so as well. And we're going to go ahead and plug in our OLED screen. Now you could very easily have another one but we're just going to repurpose the one from our other Meshtastic Pico and plug it into pins 4 and 5. SDA into 4, SCL into pin 5. Now there is quite a lot going on here, but I've kind of just expanded on what we just wrote beforehand. So we import everything we need, we've got our UART set up, and then we're gonna go ahead and set up our screen basically. This is just from the SSD1306 library. Now something this code does is that it remembers how long it's been since we've actually received that message, and that's all stored in this dictionary called last updates. Then we have our process UART message, which just extracts the actual message, followed by three more functions which are to do with timing and writing on the screen and whatnot. You can kind of just ignore them, They're, they just work, they just work. Then we turn on our screen and start recording time and finally come into our while true loop. In our main part of our code, it's actually pretty straightforward. We go, if there's anything in the UART, we'll get our message and sort it out nicely. Exactly like last time, we're gonna start by saying, does it start with something that we want? And if it does, we're gonna take the value behind the colon. Then we're gonna start recording time so we know how long it's been since we've retrieved that info. And then we're gonna call this function which displays it onto our screen. We've got six different 
possible rows that we can write to because that's how much text we can fit on this screen. And here we're saying we're going to fill in slot one. We're going to call this reading soil one. It could be really whatever you want as long as it fits. And then we're going to put through the value, which is what we pulled out after the column. And if you go down here, we just have six of these in a row. Here are the six things we're looking for. We're saying if it starts with soil two or humidity or temperature or front gate, whatever we're looking for, we're just going to send it to the appropriate slot that we want. And we can go ahead and test that by sending some dummy messages from our other device. So soil one followed by some number and it pops up like so. Let's do a soil two, beautiful, and a temperature, easy. Uh, let's do a humidity. These are just the ones that I set up before. Let's say it's 89% humidity. It's a really hot day. Rain, uh, let's say zero millimeters today. And let's simulate a message from the front gate that it is open like so. And just so we can see our whole system in action, I've gone ahead and plugged in our moisture sensor and run the code that sends that sensor reading again. And very importantly, I've gone ahead and modified it so it's sending soil one followed by the reading or our receiving mesh tastic isn't gonna know what to do with it. And if I hit run, and you can see our new data coming through like so, beautiful. I think we need to take a step back and appreciate what we actually have here. We have two nodes, one with a sensor that's connected to a Pico, which sends the reading via UART to another Pico, which then transmits that via LoRa that might jump between strangers' devices through several kilometers to get back to our other node, which is sending that message via UART to another Pico and displaying it on the screen. And it's pretty wild that you can make that with off-the-shelf hardware and not much code. And with that, you now have the tools to build some pretty important impressive stuff. This could very easily just be a button that turns on a light a kilometre away or something, or 10 gates being monitored, whether they're opened or closed. You could attach one to a vehicle and a GPS to report its location. Or it could be a mailbox sensor on a really large property. Whatever your needs are, we now have a solid method of sending and receiving data wirelessly through the Meshtastic network. And from the snippets of code we've given you so far, it's quite easy to paste them into an LLM like ChatGPT, Claude, or DeepSeek and get it to help you write code and organize your system of sending messages. Well, that about wraps us up for now. If you made something cool with this or you need a hand with anything we covered in this video, head on over to our community forums. We're all makers over there and we're happy to help. Until next time though, happy making.